I haven't started the campaign because uh, the campaign period is not yet announced by IBC. Okay, yeah. so, um, <laughs> uh, Linus, uh, no, I don't know where to start, but the campaign has not started. At least the DP says he hasn't. All that we have been seeing, including the 13 rallies we saw in Kericho today, the in the, Nakuru today, the, the, in, in, in Nakuru. Nakuru, sorry, and there is one newspaper, I think the standard it was, that counted 130 rallies mm. in yes. one, one yeah. month. Actually, wow. it, sh it should be more. Uh, because some sometimes our crews have fallen out because some rallies have gone up to very late in the evening. So could be more, maybe 150, but 180 by, or thereabouts. But he said it's Nikazi Yasserikali, then there's a lot of government ha work happening. I, I don't know how the deputy president pulled that one. <laughs> but really, it's, um, uh, even as journalists, it must be called out for uh, such an inaccurate and ridiculous statement it is that you haven't started the campaigns. We all know campaigns have been going on for a very, very long while. Uh, they didn't just start the other, the other day. Uh, how, how does a leader make such a dishonest statement uh, in a national uh, uh, press conference like that and say, uh, it's not a campaign, uh, I'm busy. what did he say, that he's visiting? He's, he's doing government work. And he's doing government work and uh, public IDC participation. IDC has not uh, uh, officially launched the campaign. Y yes, and, and this is where we have a problem as a country because, uh, first of all, the law doesn't really uh, impose that period. There is that period of official campaign, but basically we have had campaigns since the last election results came out. They have been uh, uh, going on and they have intensified. I mean, you look at the number of uh, uh, rallies the DP himself has, has addressed. Remember, he spoke and then flew immediately to, uh, to Narok uh, for, well, a campaign rally. Uh, so I think, I think politicians sometimes should um, hold back on some of these things that they say that come out as plainly dishonest. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, just to, to take us back to what prompted, um, you know, that, that statement from the Deputy President, it was a statement that was issued by the IEBC uh, decrying the early campaigns, and they actually said um, that... Um, so the IEBC, you know, yeah. which should know, which did you know. see them as campaigns. Absolutely, and they, they, this is what they said in their statement, and talking about uh, the fact that uh, indeed the commencement of the election period is yet to happen, and uh, they were citing their election operations plan uh, with the Election Offences Act of 2016 and the Electoral Code of Conduct. And they say that these laws with respect to early campaigns are only enforceable within uh, the said election period, which would take place after the notice of the general election that marks the beginning of the election period. And that is March the 14th of 2022, with the official um, election campaigns beginning 30th of May and ending on the 6th of August. Is it 48 hours before um, the polls? And so basically also what the IBC was saying is that they are literally powerless to do anything about it now because they say, you know, the law does not allow them because this is not the official campaign period. But let it also be known that um, uh, ODM leader Raila Odinga has been saying pretty much the same thing, that he's yet to declare his presidential um, ambition, and that is going to happen supposedly on the 9th of December, but yet he has traversed the country as well. It's called the Azimio La Moja, fine, but he speaks extensively about what he will do if elected. 6,000 shillings. In, in, the 6,000 shillings, and you know, going as to be very specific about that. And so I think we have quite a bit of dishonesty you know, across uh, but, the board. But you see, we've seen um, it all, all... I mean, just you know, say it. It's, we, we've seen it all yeah. true and true, Yvonne, because look, I mean, even right now, how many people truly belong to any party. I mean, if you think about the entire brigade, for example, that says they are UDA, to the best of, 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 of my knowledge, UDA has only one member of parliament. The rest of them are in the books, actually members Jubilee. of Jubilee, most right. of them at least. There are, of course, people from, from other parties. And the same thing can be said of even the relationships that we've seen even with OD, between ODM and Jubilee and all of this confusion that makes nonsense of political parties mm -hmm. as we know them. So you find people saying that um, um, 
I don't belong to that party, mm -hmm. but they don't have the courage to leave the party and go back to the people and say, hey, give me a fresh mandate. So the political hypocrisy and dishonesty in this country is mind boggling and they do it with a straight face. That's why you find, for example, someone will be so dishonest, I mean, disloyal to a party and then the party tries to kick them out, but they will fight tooth and nail to stay in, to stay in the party. And yet they don't like they it. They don't like the party. They, they keep saying all manner of, of things yeah. about the party <laughs> that, that no one understands, but they will stick in there, go through the entire process, and then, I mean, even uh, sometimes the uh, party tries to even denominate them, mm -hmm. in the case of nominated members of parliament, and you find this big fight going on. So, for crying out loud, if you don't like the party, Leave. what are you doing there? Why are you fighting to stay in the party only to keep saying all this and palatable things about the very party that you stick on. So it just means that people don't have the courage to stand for what they are truly doing. They'll hide, hide behind all these technicalities. That's why we'll be told that, oh, you know, uh, I'm yet to, to, to declare my candidature, but you keep promising things. That's why we'll be told, um, you know, I've not started my campaigns, but we can see that everything you are doing smells, walks, and Talks. looks talks Quacks. and feels and everything it does is really a campaign. And Joe, because it, 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 what you said is important. And I keep thinking about chapter six of the constitution about leadership and integrity, about viongozi. You know, we, 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 we think of ourselves, uh, our leaders think of ourselves as people who are ready kuchukua, who majukumu ya kuwa viongozi, wa kuongoza. But then now, um, they can get away with saying all sorts of things, of lying, because what are the consequences? Who is going to stand up and say, ah, we are going to I'm going to say, I'm see accurate. Because throughout this period, which is not campaigns, some of these leaders have said things that are not accurate. Mm. Some of these leaders have said things that are maybe too far-fetched. Uh, some of these leaders have said things that if you really decided to fact check and go deep and look at what they've said in terms of the numbers and figures and events and, and things like that, you'll actually find a lot of inaccuracies. But no one will stand up and say, but you said this the other time, how that is not true. And they keep saying the same things again, building up on these inaccuracies and, 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 and firing, firing up crowds that, that show up on the sides of the road to listen to them. And, and, and for me, that uh, begs the question of now, us as a people, um, if we are OK and fine with our leaders saying all sorts of things and they get away with it, what does that say about us? Do we, why do we elect the leaders we elect? What do we look for when we are choosing a leader? What do we look for when we go queue at 3, 4 AM to go elect a leader? And I think sometimes I was thinking about how, how underwhelming the voter registration exercise was in terms of the numbers of people who came up to register as new voters. And I'm thinking maybe the youth who were targeted did not come up to register. Um, are clearly looking at this and thinking, I don't think there's anything in this for me and none of these leaders are attractive enough for me to go and queue and vote for them because they do not stand for what I think leaders should stand for. And, and, and we should be worried as a society if this is what, what we'll keep seeing and no one says anything. But, but when is the last time anyway that someone was not elected because they lied? I mean, that's where actually <laughs> the problem is because we don't seem to see dishonesty. We don't seem to see this lack of integrity as a quality or as a factor that we should consider when we are vetting, quote unquote, the various leaders that present themselves every election cycle. So it, in, in a sense, the kind of things we place premium on during elections are totally uh, irrelevant in terms of determining whether that person will really be a good leader or not. Because if someone is going to tell you with a straight face that actually, um, this is black, and and you know, they, <laughs> Clearly, and, and they, can, they know you know that it is not black. They know that it is not black, and they know you know, and you know they know, and nobody really cares. You know, there, it is, there's something. Uh, uh, sorry, Francis. There's something that um, uh, we wrongly do as Kenyans, and that is we think lying is part of politics, uh, and part of our legitimate part of <laughs> politics. Because look at us, even in the villages, go to an MCA level, go to a member of parliament. You know, they'll talk about bridges, roads, and things like that. And um, somehow the public has been conditioned to feel and think that it's OK to lie. Because there's so much lying on the podium. There's so much inaccuracies that uh, politicians put out there. 
And uh, because they, they know that the public thinks, oh, it's okay, it's, it's part of the talent that you require to <laughs> succeed in politics. Yeah, you see, uh, the, all these things that we say here are the ideal situation. This is ideally if politics was to be played the way it is to be, if democracy was to work as it ought to be, all these nice things we're saying here, being truthful, integrity, would apply. Unfortunately, uh, Jamila likes saying, kwa ground vitu ni tofauti. Because, unfortunately... Well, there's a new one, Francis. Yeah. Sisi ndio tuko. Sisi ndio tuko. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Sisi tafute some other guys. Yeah. Tumajua mnataka wale wengine wazuri. Eh, lakini wale sisi. Wale wa integrity. Eh. Lakini. Because you see, look at it this way. <laughs> even that statement from IEBC, truly, when you read it, did you even think seriously that IEBC would do anything about the campaigns that are ongoing? And, I mean, all these politicians are campaigning. By now, how do we know that these are the number of people who are seeking the presidency or have declared their interest in the presidency? It is because they have been campaigning. Um, the ODM leader has been on the campaign trail. The deputy president has been on the campaign trail. Kalonzo, Mudavadi, Gideon, all of them have been on the campaign trail. In fact, tomorrow, we, we already know, we already have an outline of who will be where, why. Yeah, for example, Bungoma and, and Transoya Friday and Saturday, that is where um, Wetangula and Mudavadi will be. But IBC will do nothing about the early campaigns. Nothing, absolutely nothing. It will end at the warning and the threat that came from IBC. Because let IBC attempt to take any action against any of these um, uh, aspirants, and you will hear, oh, IABC is compromised, IABC is being used, IABC is favoring this and that, because some, we have good laws on paper, but implementation is where the challenge is. And I, 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 will, I will not even uh, think too much that IABC will do anything about it, because they will not do anything about it. If we imagine a scenario where all these presidential aspirants have to wait until 30th of May, <laughs> 2022, <laughs> to, to kick off their campaigns. I mean, unimaginable, <laughs> impossible. So, uh, no, a lot uh, of them actually are, yeah. are waiting. Yeah. So, so I mean, when, when Lina says, so, 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 <laughs> okay, so, 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 so to, to apply to apply Lina's uh, sentiments. Tunajua nyinyi mnataka wale wa campaign kutoka 30th of May to 7th of August. Lakini? Lakini hawa wenye wana campaign sa hii ndiyo wako. So get used to them. Tupambane na hali yetu. Yeah. But but ladies and gentlemen, there was supposed to be a jubilee NDC. Yeah. yeah. Yes, NDC. Mm -hmm. and, and somehow it, uh, it, it, it didn't happen. I mean, it was so sudden because everything appeared set and then... I mean, it should have happened in the next, uh, what, three, four days from today? On 30th of this mm -hmm. month. Tuesday? Tuesday? Tuesday next week. Tuesday yeah. next week. Um, then there was this reason that because there was, a, you know, the state of the nation addressed by the president on that very day, then it would happen a different day. What came first? Mm. What came first? <laughs> the, the chicken the, the, or the egg? Yeah. <laughs> what came first was the <laughs> declaration and a notice issued for an NDC. Yes. The State of the Nation address came later. Um, so that the, uh, that the State of, State of the Nation address was the reason for the postponement? Maybe, maybe not. Um, well, I would say that the President has a, a, up, up to, I think, 3rd of uh, December when the MPs go away for him to speak. Yeah, because the House is going on recess um, and it will not be back until February, sometime in February mm -hmm. next year. And while at it, maybe there are some things that he made, needed to tell parliamentarians. But the notice for the NDC came earlier. But be it as it may, the next question should be, once we are past 30th of November mm. on Tuesday, yeah. which, which date is the new date for the NDC? I've had 3rd of December, 4th of December, maybe, maybe not. Um, whether there was, there's that willingness to do that NDC. We've had members of parliament, especially those who support the president, say they are looking forward to the NDC so that a few things can be done, including uh, formally disengaging uh, with the members of parliament who have joined the deputy president, and including himself as the de deputy party leader. Of course, that, that's a major political um, uh, step if it was to be taken. And it has its, its own political consequences, as it were. 
Um, and so what is important now is to see whether after Tuesday, if there will be a new date, and mm -hmm. whether the 3rd or 4th December dates that are being mentioned will actually be the days when NDC will happen, and whether actually the NDC will happen anyway. And if it happens, whether there will be that courage to take action and expel these members of parliament. In any case, quite a number of them have said they are waiting for January so that they can Resign. quote unquote mm. defect, you know, defect from the party. But you see, it's also a clever thing because by then it will be impossible to conduct by elections because the law yeah. tells us that you cannot conduct by election six, six months, months to the general election. Mm. And you see, there's that period of uh, declaring a vacancy, the campaign period, and the actual date of the by-election. So it is impractical to do a by-election from January onwards. So even if they were to resign on their own merit or to defect formally to, to UDA, it will have no legal consequence, so mm. to say, because you can't send them away. If that was to happen today, probably there would be an opportunity to do that by-election. But by January or thereabout, time will have gone. In any case, it will be too close to a general election, even so it does not make see. political sense Financial and economical sense. sense. And, and in any case, sense, even yeah. if, 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 I mean, for those people, that would be a good time uh, for them to be fired. In any case, uh, the election is coming up and all you can do is campaign. That's all they'll be doing anyway, so Absolutely. you could as well campaign on, on, on that new party ticket. But, uh, Linus, this was very untidy. I mean, because this is the governing party, at least that is what uh, is on paper, that, you know, Jubilee is in power. And it's NDC, highly anticipated. I mean, this is something that would involve the President of the Republic. And then um, suddenly, a few days to that meeting, it is called off without any proper explanation. I mean, all of those things that we are seeing, they are suppositions and statements from people who are really not mandated to speak on behalf of the party. Um, that reeks of um, a party that is yet to really function the way a party ought to. Absolutely. Uh, but I also see Tuck, you know, the part of whoever is uh, calling the shots within Jubilee, because uh, the scenario described by uh, Francis here is very, very accurate. The main critical period, election period, is coming up in January going, going forward. So why would you pick injuries uh, before Christmas? <laughs> because the, the, the parting of ways in Jubilee is, going to, is still going to be messy. Mm. Remember, the uh, UDA Brigade has decided to stay put. Technically, they remain members of Jubilee. And so technically, what if they decide to actually turn up for the, uh, for the NDC? What if the, the, the DP drives in as the deputy party leader of, uh, of, of Jubilee? You will have a very, very uh, ugly Christmas if you are ju Jubilee. So I see this as purely a uh, political attack. Hold on. You don't need to do anything right now. There's nothing urgent. You do everything sometime early next year where you combine the, de the delegates conference, the picking of new party leaders, with the election agenda uh, agenda together so that you avoid this season where you can get a lot of punching uh, from the other wing of jubilee that is yet to clear uh, from, from from the party remember and, and, and we spoke about this uh, in the other stages of this show that the uda uh, members and supporters have not left jubilee they're, they're still there so they would want to actually uh, uh, fix the party Go there and make a statement. Make things look as ugly as possible. Mm. Time and again, you've had, had them saying, we've built this party. Mm. We've brought this party this far, and, and, and all that. So if you hold that delegates conference right now, and you're not sure, you know, of, of, um, you are not in control of every aspect of it, then it's actually a, a gamble. You can, you, you can, you can get into a, a little bit of a problem. So I think. This is tactical. They are moving it to uh, next year. And next year, everybody is uh, on the race to uh, August 9th. And yeah, and, and uh, yes. but, but why, why announce the, it in the first place? Then you cancel. Exactly. And I think also, um, because even I was looking through uh, an article, and they're saying that 
they actually had plans underway, the list of delegates had been drawn, so this was something that was, was going to happen. But then, and then there was also the communication from Jubilee, there was the press release saying that this meeting is going to happen. But what Lena says actually makes a lot of sense. And I, 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 I'm looking at this in terms of the president. He may not want to have that confrontation um, at the National Delegates Conference because, as you said, those uh, members of Jubilee who are who will hopefully exit at some point, saying this is our party. Even the deputy president says it several times, that this was our party. So it would be untied, in fact, I think, the National Delegate Conference, whenever it happens, because it would have been, maybe that would, it would be the platform when officially uh, Deputy President William Ruto is probably kicked out of the party. But who says uh, they'll go away silently, mm. that it will just be, okay, mm. to mm. 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 there'll be a confrontation, <coughs> probably messy, Noisy, I don't know. Messy, uh, yes, casualties. bloody and all those things. And Not I don't think the president wants to be The last, to the be last caught time into that. we used that line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was, it was yeah, the last time. It yeah. Yes, it's patented. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that, is yeah. that a distinguished is gentleman is from really? Goma, <laughs> the Honorable no, Moses. Really? Wetangula. <laughs> Niake. Okay, I'm sorry. Moses I don't. Masika I don't want to pay off. Moses any. was Masika Wetangula. I, I, I do not certainly have the money to pay from that off. From Sirisi, I know. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. you, see, you see, Joe, what, what would you rather? Um, or, uh, I would think this is the question that is happening, especially among the Jubilee members. What would, what would they rather? Kick out the what they call rebels, or let them live at their own terms? Because kicking them out would obviously attract a lot of reaction and it would work both ways. One, the political consequences and also a legal contest. Um, you would see quite a number of them, you know, in some of, some yeah. of uh, a, lot, a lot of court cases and even at the political parties tribunal. So what would you rather, spend your time fighting political battle, battles as a result of the expulsion and the court battles or let time go on when that decision is made you know automatically uh, generically then you hold your your national delegates conference sometime later in the year i would think probably that is the route that we that we that we will we'll see being taken but be it as it may um the relationship between the deputy president and the president in terms of management of the jubilee party is a gone case now it, it's it's, yeah, put do. it this way, it's over, so to yeah. say. So no need of probably may, maybe too many fights. Let nature take its course. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just, I just wanted to add, you know, everything that we're saying here is why would Jubilee want to have an NDC? In some cases, uh, you know, an NDC strengthens the party position, strengthens mm. its structures. But in this case, it could actually be completely disastrous. Because if you take a look at the state of the Jubilee party right now, 173, uh, you know, members in the mm. house. But then also, what do you have? What is left of Jubilee right now? Um, the URB wing, you know, largely, I know they're still in the party, but Heart and Mind you know, has left. Um, Kiraitu is out. In fact, he's launching a uh, devolution empowerment party, mm. otherwise known as the Mbas party. On Saturday. Uh, Kiunjuri is out uh, with his TSP party. Bus on bus, actually? Bus. bus. It's a bus, but it's pronounced as but bus. It's, it's colloquially okay. known as, as, as the, the, the Mbas party. I mean, take a look at other people who've left. Even, um, is it uh, the Nakuru governor, Lee Kinyanji, has the Ubuntu yeah. party? People's Even Forum. Like Moses Kuri has Chama yeah. Yes. So this is what is but left. It's a complete shell for um, a party that has never had grassroots elections. So who are those, uh, you know, interim party uh, members that are, are going to do there? And do they risk an NDC? Do they risk grassroots elections at this time? As millions of shillings being spent on what is essentially a futile exercise going forward, and which would be potentially embarrassing for the party leader, who is President, uh, you know, Uhuru yeah, Kenyatta. Yeah. The other thing I just want to add before we close is I would be interested to see if they do hold an NDC, what the position of the party leader Uhuru Kenyatta will be going forward mm -hmm. you know in this party will he continue to have a say is it something that he will do but everything that we've seen now just continues to affirm uh, the tentativeness or non-permanence or placeholder of Jubilee party which essentially uh, performed its functions and now just can't seem to get it together but, but I, mean, I mean but as we finish if Jubilee wanted to hold a national delegates conference. They actually can. I mean, mm -hmm. we've seen yeah. parties that, uh, in, uh, in all practical terms, are smaller than Jubilee, Jubilee even with all those problems, 
actually bring delegates to this town. Never mind, we do not quite know whether they are card-carrying members or not. But Jubilee would hold a national delegate conference if they wanted. And one of the things I think politically that would be helpful for them if they were to do that was really to disabuse all of us of this idea that Jubilee is dead, it doesn't exist, it doesn't have members. Mm -hmm. They would actually bring delegates and say, here, here you've been are. saying we don't have... Here, here, we, are. here, here we, we are. And they'll be singing in, in Kasarani and, and saying all kinds of things. And then uh, that perhaps, if they did it well, could give Jubilee the momentum and actually uh, a, a voice once again in this town to say, look, we are not dead. You saw what happened at Kasarani, and they will have all MCAs and all kinds of people coming from different parts of the country. Um, and then, um, in the true fashion of uh, the merry-go-round we've seen, they will have uh, Oka and Raila Odinga <laughs> and all of these people spicing up the party. <laughs> so and the message so gets lost. Leaders. So they can't super, do it. Yeah, super yeah. delegates. Right. Can, yeah, super well, delegates. I mean, and even if you take a look at even the party structure, there's so much disquiet, right? I mean, we saw the members of parliament, is it Kanini Kega and uh, Ngunjira Mbugu and a number of others, Joshua Kutuni expressing displeasure with the current uh, you know, leadership, the officials, leadership yeah, officials, yeah. after the loss of the three by-elections that we saw earlier this year. So even those interim members do not necessarily enjoy the support and confidence of you know the elected leaders or some of them. So I mean it's it's really not looking good if you take a look at you know we'll do, do a state of the nation, but if you take a look at the state of the party of Jubilee, it's, it's not problem. I, I think right now we need to look at the state of no, we're actually the, taking this home the kicker. <laughs> Because that's where we're going to start. Let me actually take the liberty to give you one soundbite before we go, because this was major in the news, and that is uh, CJ Martha Komi mm -hmm. uh, coming into the eye of the storm. The independence of the judiciary is deep. I, I, so let's just listen to Martha Komi very quickly. And because our people were very clear that the independence of the judiciary should be underpinned in the Constitution. It cannot just be taken away. When we were children, we used to suffer many sicknesses because of where we grew up. One of them was a skin rash we used to call Mwale. If you met somebody who had Mwale, they would infect you with Mwale. So what I try to tell Kenyans is that independence of the judiciary is deep, is fundamental, it cannot be taken away simply because I have sat with other agencies of government, with the politicians. We are required by our constitution to collaborate and coordinate our affairs. No one can act in a silo and be able to deliver for the people. More a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but they actually, she was so, referring so to chicken by, pox. So is it just, just, just by being with other people, um, the independence will not be taken away, will not be rubbed off and then it goes away or something? I think that's probably what she analogy. was trying to say, that, you know, our independence is not like that uh, Mwari thing. This yeah. is deep. It goes below the skin. Because okay. I give Mwari is a skin, skin disease, disease. No? Okay. Yeah. I think it's, okay. it's chicken uh, pox, if I'm not true. Political skin disease. <laughs> <laughs> the yes. But I think the city also needs to think about perception, 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 independence of the judiciary, the fact that they'll be the arbitrator in case there are any uh, matatizo uko uchaguzi kikamilika. So perception is very important in people's hearts and minds. Kwamba yule ambaya naamua, Ideally, there's no problem except that in this country we've gone through many things before and as they say, if you have been bitten by a snake, even if you see a blade of grass move, yeah. there you go. What, 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 this all was, what this is all about, it's the multi-agency committee on elections. And that committee, I would think it's more about political suspicion and not anything else. That suspicion that something could be done, something could be in the offing, and especially as we head to a general election that looks like it will be very competitive, I see a scenario where all this is driven by political suspicion. And so the Chief Justice together with the CSAs, Matiangi, Moshero, Eugene, increasingly will need to probably keep reassuring the country that hey, there's nothing untoward being done here, and IBC to continue assuring all the players that 
the general election will be free, fair, and credible, and so that they can deal with the political suspicions. Otherwise, I don't think this discussion will end anytime soon. It's about the technical working committee for election preparedness. As we allow Linus to take us home, remember UDA has already spoken about this, and they've already written to the IABC about this. Uh,